Hi, uh, this is Kyle Long for Calhoun Community College English 102, and today I want to talk about um, Ernest Hemingway's Hills Like White Elephants. Uh, this story is quite common in curriculum, and it is common that uh, many students have read in high school, or if not, then in just casual reading on your own. Um, the story is set in Spain's Valley of Ebro, and we have two people in conversation with one another. Um, we have someone who is identified only as the American, and we have a woman identified as Jig. Um, as these two people talk at this apparently like sun-bleached uh, railway station um, in the middle of, of um, this valley that it, it appears to be kind of barren and, and treeless, um, they begin to have a conversation about something that is happening between them that is never explicitly identified in the story, but um, most scholars agree um, of what the, uh, the, the conversation is really referring to. And I'd like to refer to just a couple of passages quickly to show you how we walk through this, how we walk through this identification between what they really are talking about um, in metaphor. Okay, so if you look on page uh, 278, you'll see when they're talking, about line, uh, it looks between the number five and ten, it says, um, the woman brought the two glasses of beer and felt two felt pads. She just put the felt pads and the beer glasses on the table and looked at the man and looked at the man and the girl. The girl was looking off the line of hills. They were white in the sun and the country was brown and dry. They looked like white elephants, she said. I've never seen one, the man said. The man drank his beer. No, you wouldn't have. I might have, the man said. Just because you say I wouldn't have doesn't prove anything. Well, um, from this passage, we can see that there is a certain amount of tension between the man and the woman, um, and that she's made an observation that the mountains look like white elephants. And so I believe that this passage caused the reader to, to wonder, why does... Jig see the mountains like white elephants, um, and for example, when for example when we look at um, clouds in the sky, and we imagine them to be different shapes, whether it be um, Mickey Mouse ears or a frog or whatever it is, that a certain amount of what we imagine we see in the clouds comes from our own internal monologue producing these images. Uh, much as clouds are able to bend and form and, and take multiple shapes to multiple people because they have they're this kind of formless mass that the reader or the seer is putting some of what they see into the shape of the clouds. So the question becomes, why does she see these mountains as white elephants? And so let's read on just a little bit further on the next page. When she says, um, on line, I think about 28, oh, cut it out, uh, you started it, the girl said, I was being amused, I was having a fine time, oh, well, let's try to have a fine time. And then we skip down just a little bit, where she says, and of course, I've missed my cue right here, but when she says, oh, yes, she says, and when I said they looked like white elephants. That, that that was entertaining. And and he says, and yes, it was. Um, so he's acknowledging, too, that he understands her metaphorical reference to the mountains looking like white elephants as well. So by this time, if the reader has a certain amount of experience in life, um, of maturity, um, of dealing with of uh, this type of, of instance of conversation between a man and a woman, that we might have some idea of what they're talking about. And at this point, I'd like to ask you, do you know? Do you know what it was? And when I was in high school and I was reading this, I did not know what the, the symbolism was. But if you think about an elephant, the way an elephant is shaped, the back, and then the forward to the head and to the nose, does it resemble a pregnant woman laying on her back with her pregnant belly followed by her bare breast, right? So is Jig seeing the mountains in the background? Is she seeing them not as just mountains, but as a reclined woman laying there? But also symbol symbolic of like a white elephant with the humps too. 
So it's very common. Um, many scholars uh, have determined that this is what the conversation revolves around. This idea of the white elephant being um, the pregnancy, or possibly this other metaphor of the white elephant in the room, the elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. And it's the thing that we see them have this push back and forth and back and forth that they do and that they don't want to talk about. And this becomes a little clearer. Um, what I'll just discuss the passages directly to the camera. Well, this becomes a little bit clearer, um, a little bit further in the story, when um, they're having this argument, when um, they seem to be trying to determine what is the meaning of having it all. When we see Jig, who obviously wants to keep the baby, and the American, who is obviously referring to the idea of having an abortion and moving on or keeping on traveling. And then so the argument goes something like this. The American says, we can have it all. You know, We can do this. We can have it all. And then Jig is, well, yes, we can have it all you know, if we keep the baby. And she's not saying this and he's not saying this outright. They're speaking in, in very thinly disguised veils, right? And so what do they mean when they both believe, yes, we can have it all. Yes, we can have it all. And in the American terms, I, we see that as he can have it all if they have no baby, they can keep traveling, they can be a family or, or a couple together, and they can have the whole world. And he even says that we can have the whole world. And what he literally means is that we can have this world around us. We can travel. We can be free. We can do what we want. The world is at our fingertips, much as you hear older people saying about younger people. The world is at your fingertips. Reach out and grab it. That that's what he means. That this idea of the world is there for the taking. That nothing can hold us back if we are together and we are, in a way, we are unshackled by this responsibility. And her response, Jig's response, is that yes, we can have it all. And in her reference to having it all, very clearly says that no, the, this world is not having it all. It's having family that is having it all. That having this baby together, that is having it all to Jig. And so these kind of uh, references to having it all really interplay of what is the meaning of, I guess, life, not to be too esoteric, but what is the meaning of happiness and fulfillment and um, living a very full and rich life? And then are these kind of definitions um, elastic and are they um, do they take on the shape of the reader, much as the cloud takes on the shape of the seer? This definition of having it all, does it take on the shape of the mind of the reader, him or herself? And I think this is probably one of the most uh, important uh, uh, takeaways from the story, this idea of what is it to have a full and genuine life. Into this, there are many other discussions, um, which I'll talk about in the next video, um, because we're running out of time, because YouTube only allows 10 minutes. So, the beginning of the next video, I'll show you a few more uh, dissections of the story, and we'll talk about a few more readings that you may be interested in as well. Okay, I'll see you in just a minute.